Ohio's Organic Farm in Wimberley again. It is the end of summer and this is what I find. The weeds are taller than me. Well, getting ready for this fall season and everything I'm gonna be growing, I am not gonna weed eat all this down, till it, and then hoe up rows. Hoe no mo. I am gonna do a whole new process this year. It's called no tillage. Today I'm gonna to show you two simple and effective ways to prepare your garden beds. Number one is with cardboard. Number two is with plastic. Well, you might ask yourself, is it that simple? And you betcha it is. Okay, for the cardboard method, these are the supplies I recommend. You need to get cardboard that you'd otherwise probably recycle and make sure that it doesn't have any labels on it. You're gonna tear off all the labels and any additional plastic that they have to seal the box. Second supply is you're gonna need some good compost. Third supply is you're gonna get yourself some, a bag of rock phosphate. Then you need some powdered oyster shells. Last thing you're gonna need is some good aged mulch. First step is to mow down the area in your backyard that you wanna plant your garden in. Second step is to take a hose and water the whole area down, completely saturated. Your ground is wet, the grass is wet, you're gonna put a bunch of compost on top, probably about two inches thick. Then on top of the compost, and you can make your bed as large as you want to or as small. On top of the compost, you sprinkle lightly some rock phosphate. Here in the central Texas area, the soil is so alkaline that plants really, this is a root stimulator, and if you put it pretty far down below the planting, it really chasses up the plants and makes them want to reach down. Then you sprinkle that oysters, powdered oyster shell on top. The oyster shell make a huge difference in the growth rate and vitality of your fall crops. In this first layer of organic compost, rock phosphate and oyster shell down first before the cardboard will bring in those sexy microbes and that bacteria that we talked about last week in composting 101. They'll eat any organic matter that's coming in from any weeds that might try to germinate below and that in turn will turn it into humates which will bring in the worms. It's a beautiful cycle but you want to have those three ingredients on your bottom layer. Then you put the cardboard on top. Know that a weed's going to come up through any little gap I have in the cardboard. So I've got a second box underneath this. Th this is what you want to do. But make sure you water it. And I'm getting hot today. I like to play in the water while I'm working. Then you're going to line it with mulch and then you're going to drop your compost in your dirt. Okay. So you've got the steps. And I am ready to plant. Say you plant carrots. Over the course of time, like say 30 to 45 days, they're gonna be working down, but that cardboard's gonna continue to get wet. So by the time the carrot reaches down there, it's not gonna hit a cardboard wall. The cardboard's already gonna be decomposing and don't underestimate carrots. They can work their way through that cardboard. It's gonna be kind of mushy by then anyway. The other way is with plastic. Now I've been planting in this area for about three years. And although I crop rotate, it is just laced with weeds and Johnson grass I can't get rid of. If you don't feel like planting a fall garden this year, then just start prepping for spring. Mow down an area, wet it real good, cover it with six milliliter black plastic, secure the plastic with rocks or whatever, whatever you got because the wind's gonna come. That is like an easy bake oven. The sun's gonna bake down on that all winter long. And by March, I can pull off that plastic and I'll be ready to plant. Okay, so two other options besides plastic and cardboard are like big boy toys is what I call them. I farm a lot and I sell all my vegetables at farmer's markets. So I really need big boy toys. I not only use a flame weeder, but I also use a tractor. Now this puppy, I guess I should call it this bull, really can dig down deep and get rid of the weeds and then I build my beds on top of that. And it's a blast to drive, too. One way that you guys will find a lot of fun, I'm trying it out this year. This is my new backpack flame weeder. You hold it closer, right by the tip of the plant, the weed, 
it burns it, the flame keeps going down, it burns, it kills the cells in the plant, and it supposedly burns it all the way down to close to the roots, or at least soil level. Crazy, huh? Always have somebody nearby with a hose. Well, this is brand new to me, but every man I've mentioned it to has said, oh, kick ass, man, those things are a lot of fun to use. Next week, we're gonna be talking about planting seeds. We got a full moon coming, and we're gonna talk about planting by lunar cycle. If you liked my Ho No Mo video today, please like and share us, or subscribe to us on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.